welcome to The Lake Report. I'm Katie Sartoris, the local news editor at The Daily Commercial and your host here on The Lake Report. We've got lots to cover this week, so let's start with some headlines. The Eustis Police Department has added a new employee. Echo the therapy dog recently started work at the station to help take the edge off of police work. Chief Craig Capri said he can already see Echo's positive effect. After all, Chief Craig Capri said, who doesn't love dogs? In our salute section this week, we've got a feature on a veterans nonprofit, Warriors to Farmers, which offers veterans paid positions on the St. John's Hops Farm with access to counseling to help acclimate them back into society. Learn more about this dynamic initiative at dailycommercial.com. And now for the latest on the COVID-19 front, and it's good news. The Florida Department of Health has reported the fourth consecutive weekly drop in coronavirus cases since the Omicron surge began locally late last year. This specific variant is producing milder symptoms in generally healthy people, but it's more contagious. Still, experts agree, getting vaccinated is the best way to protect yourself from a severe bout with the coronavirus, and more people are getting vaccinated every week. As it stands in Lake County, 68% of people five and older are vaccinated. That number is even higher in Sumter County at 76%. Still need your shot? Find a location at vaccines.gov. The high school basketball postseason is in full swing, and we've got coverage of the top matchups. For the latest, check dailycommercial.com. Of course, you'll find more news on our website and in the pages of the Daily Commercial. The city of Leesburg is collecting information for its new Complete Streets plan, and they're looking for your help. Ryan Gurdon with the Leesburg Public Works Department met up with some of the developers behind the project to help us get a better understanding. Let's check it out. I'm Ryan Gurdon with your City of Leesburg Public Works Department. On February 2nd, the Venetian Center hosted a public meeting to get feedback on the Complete Streets planning study along Main Street. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with that study, its purpose is to improve the travel and the safety for those residents and visitors who frequent Main Street. In turn, its long-term benefits will be both social and economic to our community, and that's something we could all get excited about. Let's go check in with the folks who are driving this initiative and see how it's coming along. We're here with Michael Woods, the executive director of the Lake Sumter Metropolitan Planning Organization. Michael, thanks for being with here with us today. Why don't you explain to us what your organization does? Sure, the Lake Sumter MPO, they set the regional transportation planning and priorities for Lake and Sumter counties. Uh, we have a 29 member board. It was created in 2005 after the 2000 census. We, we met the population threshold for the creation of MPO. So 29 member board, it's all the Lake County Commissioners, two Sumter County Commissioners, then one elected official from all 19 cities in Lake and Sumter counties. We also have both school boards and the local railroad represented on this board. And together they set the planning and funding priorities for our region. So explain to us what your specific role is in the organization. Sure, I'm the executive director, so I'm staff for this board. I make sure they have the relevant information they need to make intelligent decisions. I manage a small planning staff and a large team of project consultants to help me with our required planning documents and compliance with federal and state regulations to make sure all of our projects are eligible for federal and state funding. So how does a project like this come to life? And, and more specifically, how was Main Street in Leesburg selected? So back in 2015, the MPO did a call for projects. We were updating our, our 20 year transportation plan, the 2040 long range transportation plan. We wanted to address complete streets projects. And so we did a call for projects and Leesburg submitted the main street project for us in 2015. So we vetted the project, we, we asked DOT to fund it and we got funding for this last year. So what determines whether a project gets selected and actually put into the construction phase? That's why we're doing the study right now. We want input from the city officials, city staff, county officials, county staff, and the public. We really want to know what the public thinks about this project and how it can impact them. So we're doing the study, make sure it's a viable uh, project that we can build, and then eventually we'll bring it to the MPO board for funding prioritization. Very interesting stuff. Thanks for being here with us today and educating us on the process. Let's go check in and see how some of these specifics unfold, okay? 
Jamie, you work with HDR, the architectural and engineering firm who is spearheading this design and study. Um, what are some of the key elements that you want put into this project? So this is a complete streets plan. So complete street is a street that works well for all users of the street, whether no matter their age or ability or their mode of travel. So we're looking to uh, provide some additional facilities, new and improved facilities for people that are walking or riding a bike, uh, ways for people to cross the street more safely. We're looking at adding landscaping and making other improvements to intersections to make the corridor a more welcoming environment for everybody. So where are we at with the process now and what's the next step? We're nearing the end of what we call our alternatives assessment phase. So through the process thus far, we've, we've done some initial community uh, outreach, gotten some feedback that's really helped us shape uh, some guiding principles that encompass things like um, economic prosperity, um, community, community beautification, livability, safety, um, and accessibility and connectivity. Um, our project team has looked at the corridor and divided the corridor into five segments. So in those five segments, there's different contexts uh, in terms of the land use and the street pattern, traffic characteristics. And so we've developed alternatives within each one of those separate uh, segments. And so this is the point where we're looking to evaluate the alternatives. We want to get community feedback on what you know, everybody thinks about the various alternatives so that we can select a preferred alternative. So the next step is going to be once we've assessed the alternatives and selected a preferred is to move into concept development. So that will be developing a more detailed concept end to end on the corridor. So you talked about feedback from the people of Leesburg. What specific help are you looking from us? So as you noted earlier, we had a public meeting on February 2nd. We're looking to add to the feedback that we got at that meeting. So we have a narrated presentation that's available right now on the city's website. Um, that also has a link to a survey. So the presentation has all the background and detail on the, on the corridor, the various segments and the alternatives that are being um, presented and the survey will allow people to provide their feedback in terms of what their preferences are for those alternatives. So with those people that are interested in participating, when are you going to need them to provide their feedback by? So we're going to have the survey open until February 23rd, so that gives people about a week to provide their feedback. Um, after that point, we're going to be compiling all the feedback, uh, completing our assessment, and then we're going to be making a presentation to the City Commission on March 28th that will provide information on the preferred alternative. Tons of great information. Thanks for helping us out with that today, Ben. So there you have it, Leesburg, and now we're looking for your help. To be part of this or find out about other exciting developments in the city, visit our website at www.leesburgflorida.gov or follow us on Facebook. In the meantime, continue to explore our beautiful lakefront city and we look forward to seeing you out there. Thanks, Ryan. Don't touch that dial. When we come back, we've got the latest from the Melon Patch Theater. Welcome back. We hope you're enjoying this week's episode of The Lake Report, a partnership between Leesburg's Lakefront TV and The Daily Commercial. This weekly magazine show features news and event coverage from around our community. Have a story idea? We'd love to hear it. Shoot us an email at lakefront at leesburgflorida.gov. The Melon Patch Theater has some special events coming up, including the opening of their newest play, Chess the Musical. Let's check in with Dustin Levine to see what's going on at the patch. Hi, I'm Dustin Levine, the executive director here at the Melon Patch Players, and I'm really excited to share with you some of the new things that are going to be happening on our stage within the next few months. First off, we have a special engagement with a traveling troupe, basically described as a gothic touring uh, group of actors, Phantasmagoria, and they are going to be doing a special February love-themed show called Hauntingly Romantic Tales. As usual, they're going to take classic things that you might know and put their own gothic spin on it. So if you're not into just the romance aspect of things, I think you'll find a bunch more in this 
that is truly intriguing and will really bring enjoyment to everybody, even those that are just there with friends. So I encourage you to go onto our website and get your tickets before they're gone, as this is only one night, February 26th, and then they will be no more as far as here. Though they are traveling to a couple different areas, we are the last stop on their list. So again, visit our website, www.melonpatchplayers.org, for more information about that event, and as well as getting your tickets. Coming up after that in March is our very special show, Chess the Musical. Now this is gonna be our first musical back on stage since the pandemic started, so we're quite enthusiastic about it and really hoping that our audience will be as well. Now for you, of those of you that don't know Chess, it's a great story set in 1980s, basically centered around the Cold War and the great battle of chess between the Americans and the Russians. Adding to the intrigue of this show, it has a wonderful writing team. The men of ABBA are the ones who did the music for the show, and Tim Rice, who has brought you many things, including Lion King, uh, Aida, many other shows, he did the lyrics for the show. This show is really one of those, it's dark, but it's got a great message, and it basically sets everything around the idea of chess. The idea that politics, romance, everything else can be played just like a game of chess. You'll know some hits from it were uh, one Night in Bangkok, uh, that was a big hit in the 80s on the dance scene. There's also Someone Else's Story that is known in many circles, as well as Anthem, and the show and the song I Know Him So Well, which was made popular by Whitney and C.C. Houston back in the 80s. So we really hope you'll give this show a chance and come out and see it and have some fun with us, get singing and dancing in your seats, and see what chess is all about. This one runs March 18th through April 3rd, and you can get your tickets securely by visiting melonpatchplayers.org or you can call our box office at 787-3013. We do hope to see you soon. Thanks, Dustin. What a lineup. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. To catch it again or to watch more episodes of The Lake Report, log on to Lakefront TV's YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to follow The Daily Commercial and Lakefront TV on Facebook for the latest. Until next time, get out there and explore this beautiful place we all call home.